Hello and welcome to the Rumi Forum. Uh, we are here today with Dr. Robert Crane. He will speak to us on his book, The Natural Law of Compassionate Justice in Islamic Perspective. Dr. Crane is the former advisor to the late President of the United States, Richard Nixon, and former Deputy Director for Planning of the United States National Security Council. He has authored and co-authored more than a dozen books and over 50 professional articles on comparative legal systems, strategy, and information management. Dr. Crane received his BA from Northwestern University, Evanston, Illinois, in 1956, graduating summa cum laude with majors in political science, economic planning, and, forgive me, Sino-Soviet Sino 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 studies. He went on to obtain his JD from Harvard Law School, Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1959 with a specialty in comparative legal systems and international investment. His thesis, titled The Accommodation of Ethics in International Commercial Arbitration, was published in the Arbitration Journal, fall 1959. At Harvard, he also founded the Harvard International Law Journal and served as the first president of the Harvard International Law Society. Dr. Crane was admitted to the District of Columbia Bar in 1960. Dr. Crane is a Muslim scholar whose writings have inspired and enlightened his readers around the world. And just a special mention about Read One Communications, the president who's here with us today, Halil Shadid. He's in the back uh, managing the camera. And he is from Read One Communications, which is the parent company of the award-winning television program, The Scholar's Chair, which many of you are familiar with here today. So with that said, I will hand the floor over to Dr. Crane. Could you Thank hand you. me the book, too? I haven't Certainly. even seen it yet. This is the first time Certainly. I've seen a copy. All right. <laughs> with a hammer on front. I'm not sure I like hammers. Oh well. <laughs> uh, this book is really in two parts. Um, half of it was written, the last half was, was written for the Center for Understanding Islam, and the, the uh, president of that is in the back with a, with a camera, uh, three or four years ago. But the founders of the, the funders of that decided that uh, it was too negative. It was uh, attacking those who attack Islam. Uh, and so they decided not to publish it, which is probably a good decision. So then I wrote another book, this one, which takes a, a positive view uh, and uh, points out what Islam is. And in the second part, it also explains what it's not, but without attacking anybody. Um, now the two parts, uh, one is uh, countering uh, uh, evil, uh, countering the evil of injustice and terrorism. Now, I don't go into countering uh, the the evils of injustice, but I've written many, I've written a couple of books and many articles on it. Uh, just briefly, there are the two major e evils uh, uh, in in the world, and one is uh, 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 economic inequality uh, caused by the concentration of capital ownership, which is getting worse and worse and worse. And, and that is a cause of alienation and, and terrorism. Second one is political, the concentration of political power in the world as a means to uh, maintain order uh, against the, the perceived threat of chaos in the world. Um, so concentrating economic power, concentrating political power are, I think, two of the major causes uh, of, of evil in the world, or I might even call them evil. Um, the, the second uh, uh, part of countering the evil of injustice and terrorism is countering, is countering terrorism. And I've been doing that all my life. Uh, you know, earlier it was countering uh, communist terrorism, and now it's countering uh, radical terrorism wherever it is. Uh, and of course, in the, right now we have uh, Muslims who are leading the, the, the forefront of, of terrorism. Um, and I might just list a, a couple of my writings on it to give you the, my approach. In uh, 1994, uh, I uh, published a, a, a book, a booklet, Counterterrorism 101, Grand Strategy, The Missing Dimension of Foreign Policy, because there was no grand strategy, and I, I still think there's no grand strategy. Um, and then in 2002, I wrote Religious Extremism, Muslim Challenge, and Islamic Response, 
because the Muslims are the principal challenge and the, the classical Islam is the only adequate response. Uh, let's see, 2004, Two Frontiers, New Frontiers in Conflict Management, a Grand Strategy, strategy to Wage Jihad Against Terrorist Muslims. Uh, this, I think, is primarily a Muslim responsibility. Uh, and so it's the intellectual jihad. I'll go into that later, which is the third jihad. It's mentioned only in the Quran. Um, well, let's see, 2005, tap, uh, yeah, Taproot to Terrorism. Long piece. Uh, uh, most of these have been published in journals. Uh, also, 2005, Reclaiming Islam, the Missing Dimension of Counterterrorism. Uh, this is m missing in most of the think tanks. Uh, they don't see Islam as a principal force to, to counter terrorism by Muslims, or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, 2007, Mission of Muslims in America, a Grand Strategy to Marginalize Extremists. Uh, 2008, Seize the Moment, Interfaith Cooperation Against Terrorism. And then uh, this past year, Religious Tribalism, a Major Obstacle to Peace Through Justice. And then uh, finally, the Paradigmatic Revolution of Common Ground, the common word and the common ground, which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with. So that shows you my, uh, uh, my approach uh, to terrorism and counterterrorism. That's not what this book uh, is, is explicitly about, but it's really, uh, uh, let's say, one of the missions uh, of the book. Uh, one of the tasks of Muslims is to expose the heresies against Islam uh, that extremist hijackers of, of their religion are advancing to justify what amounts to a war against civilization. Uh, I think Syed Qutb invented the concept of a clash of civilizations. Uh, other people picked it up uh, later. Uh, so there's two approaches. One is to uh, recapture the good words in Islam, such as the Sharia as a code of human responsibilities and rights. And that's what I'll emphasize mainly uh, today. That's the, the focus of, of this book. Um, the second step is to recognize and denounce the justifications that the violent criminals among the Muslims use for their actions. Uh, they and their actions should be denounced in terms that they understand, namely by words used in the Quran that apply expressly to them and their crimes. Um, their use of the, the word jihad, uh, for example, uh, for holy war, they call it holy war, although that really is a Christian term, um, uh, uh, is, is really terrorism. Um, and it, it should be called by its proper name and its classical Islamic terminology, which is hiraba or unholy and demonic war to destroy society. We have to make it clear to the ignorant or frustrated or alienated violent Muslims uh, that uh, they are waging hiraba. Uh, there's a good uh, classical Arabic word for terrorism. Um, they call themselves mujahidun or holy warriors destined for jinnah or heaven. In fact, they are muharibun, guilty of hiraba, and Mufsidu and Gildi of Fasad, which is uh, everything bad basically in the world, <laughs> uh, headed for Shehenim, evildoers headed for hell. They claim that they are fighting for Ihtiram or human respect, whereas in fact they're committing Istihlal, which is the cardinal sin of playing God. Their murderous assault and every human right should be exposed for what it is, namely a monumental act of Rida al Shaitaniya or diabolical apostrophe. Uh, we can talk to these guys as uh, supposedly hidden in the caves of Afghanistan.